I asked the, the gentleman, is it the radiologist, I believe he, I go, is that me? And he goes, yeah, that's you. You want to see it? I said, yeah. So he plays it from the beginning. And she goes, watch this main. This is your, this left main artery. This is your left main artery. Watch this artery. Uh, and I watch and it's like, you know, like a, it looks like a dark line. It's pretty thick. And then it goes a certain way. And it's like an hourglass, like a sand glass, uh, a sand clock. Uh, you may play with some some of those or somebody might have, you know, it's sand and you turn it over like uh, some games had them for like a, a minute or something. Anyway, you put enough sand, the sand and, and it looks like an like a hourglass bigger. It, it, you know, it, it like pinches down and then it opens up again. And she goes, you see that? I go, yeah, I see it. He goes, that's your left main artery. That's right where it splits. And I go, okay. He goes, and he's freaking out. You know, he's like, He's all excited. He's freaking out. I'm like, what's wrong? He goes, well, I don't understand how I'm talking to you, how I'm speaking with you, how you're awake. He goes, how did you get here? I said, I drove myself. He goes, you've been driving? I go, yeah. He goes, you walk? He goes, yeah, I go to the store, exercise, just walk at the stores. Uh, in the AC, you know, I go and walk and stuff. And, and I walk around and, and I do exercise at home as much as I can. And he goes, uh, well, this is called the Widowmaker. And if that artery clogs 100%, he goes, you got over 90% blockage. He wouldn't say much, but he was he was pretty adamant about, I don't understand how I'm talking with you. And it didn't, you know, still didn't hit. He's telling me that he doesn't understand how I'm alive, you know. And it's still not hitting me. This hit me later. And I said, well, he asked me for all my symptoms. I told him the only one I had, you know, waking up tired. Like I ran all night and, and he goes, and you asked me all these other questions about my chest and it felt funny. And I said, no, no pain, no, just that. And, uh, and he goes, well, this is serious. He goes, uh, you could, he, then he, I think he, he's mentioned, you know, this could, this could turn really bad, really fast or something, but he won't tell me much. He goes, the doctor will be right back. And the doctor comes in. I don't know where she went, but she was there. She walks in, Mr. Silas, are you can't go anywhere. He goes, we have to uh, send you on emergency surgery right now. He goes, we don't do this at this hospital. We'll do it at another one. I don't want to mention their name. Uh, it, it, was a, it, it wasn't a, a bad experience as far as, you know, taking care of me overall. He goes, they do all the surgeries over there. We don't do them here. We don't have the, I guess, the facility or whatever. We have to send you over there in emergency. This is Friday, you know, it's Friday afternoon now. And he goes, and there, there's talk, she's talking about sending me by helicopter or something quickly. And she's on the phone. She goes, I was on the phone with him, this and that. We might just send you life flight. I think it's called life flight. And, and I was like, what? And my brother heard him. He goes, she talking about a helicopter? I said, I guess. I don't, that's what I thought. She goes, yeah, that's what I thought too. So my wife, they're talking about sending me. And I, I said, this must be pretty serious. You know, I, I'm still trying to process everything. And uh, so anyway, I guess she found out that there wasn't a doctor available to do emergency surgery on me. So they sent me by ambulance. Well, we're going to send you by ambulance. Uh, she wouldn't say why, but I kind of figured what happened. You know, I said, okay, so that's fine. You know, ambulance is fine. So they, they got an ambulance. Uh, they sent me over there. Everything went well. They put me in intensive care, and 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 I'm you know I'm there, and the nurses come in and they're, you know I'm saying hi to everybody, because uh, I'm I just like you know saying hi to everybody. And the doctor comes in and he explains to me I'm not the the doctor on call now, but I wanted to come talk to you, ask you a few questions about about your you know your your I guess my health and my, my why I was there. And he goes, I, I just have some questions. I said, that's fine. I said, you can ask me whatever. And he asked me the same thing the the other doctor, you know, the cardiologist at the other hospital was asking me, oh, what were your symptoms? You know, I repeat it. And he started going through, did you feel pain in your chest? Did you feel this? Did you feel that? He goes through a whole list of it. I said, no. So what was your, I said, the only symptom I had is that I wake up tired in the morning. Like I ran all night. There's the only way I could explain it. Like I've been running, jogging all night, which, I've been laying down trying to sleep. 
And he goes, that was it? He goes, yeah. He goes, well, okay. Um, and the the doctor, at, before they sent me to this other hospital, she also, you know, tells me, she goes, I don't understand how you how you walked and drove and came over here. She goes, I don't get it. She goes, they, go, they all say the same thing. This doctor says the same thing, you know. It, he goes, I don't understand how I'm talking to you now. I, I, I'm trying to wrap, you know, he's like trying to wrap his head around it. And I'm starting to get worried. And he's like, okay, this is pretty serious. So um, a couple more doctors comes in. And they weren't my, the doctor uh, that was working at the intensive care, they were, I guess, cardiologists. They wanted to talk to me. They weren't asking me. I, I, I said, okay, this is starting to get weird, you know. Is, is this? I think even one of them said, he goes, this is a miracle that I'm able to talk to you right now. And they're all, okay, are they telling, you know, are, finally I go, they're telling me I should be dead, is what they were telling me. And it starts to sink in, you know. They're like, in awe that I was alive with so much blockage in the left main artery. If you're not familiar, the left main artery branches out, it forks. So it's three arteries that feed your heart. Uh, if one of those three arteries clogs, one third of your heart is damaged or dies. It can still function with two thirds. When the left main artery blocks before it forks, it blocks two of those arteries. So it's two thirds of your heart dies or is damaged, and you don't survive that. They finally explained to me. The doctor that was on call that the intensive care came and talked to me and he explained everything to me and they told me you know I was Friday afternoon late afternoon early evening and uh, um, they were gonna operate on me on Monday so I had to be there all weekend and it starts sinking in okay you know these guys are all telling me I should be dead and then one guy even said I remember some one of those doctors saying it's a miracle and he wasn't the he wasn't the only one. Some nurses, all the nurses were asking me, you know, the ones that come in. And I was talking to them, and I, I don't mind. And they would ask me, and I go, tell you, ask me whatever. And, and they're like, wow, you know, they were all it's, they were all you know freaking out. So apparently, I was a celebrity for a minute there at the hospital, at least with the cardiologist. Um, so I, that night, it started to sink in. It, and I started to worry. I hadn't worried until that, that night. I didn't sleep. I don't think I slept the whole time I was there. I did, but, you know, felt like I didn't. I could I could barely sleep anyway with my back. So um, that's when I said, okay, I'm in, I'm in intensive care. If that left main blocks, am I going to die? Or... Maybe I won't die because I'm in intensive care. Maybe, and I told them they, they needed to resuscitate me. I didn't want to die. And uh, how much brain damage am I going to have? If how, how long would I go without oxygen to my brain is what I was thinking. Maybe I won't die or maybe, but, or maybe I would. I don't, I don't and I started to worry. All weekend. I couldn't wait for Monday morning. So uh, I made phone calls that weekend to everybody that I, I wanted to tell, I guess. And uh, Monday morning came. This time, you know, they put you under. And I was under before when they took all the rods and stuff out of my back. And when they did that angioplasty thing and. I don't know if that's the right term, but and uh, that's what I remember. And uh, that Monday morning when they when they put me under, I remember. I think the guy said count backwards from a hundred and then you know one hundred ninety nine, and like I think I got to ninety eight or something. And then I closed my eyes, and then it was just like I opened my eyes, and uh, you know you find out like six hours have passed by. Um, I didn't go nowhere. I just uh, woke up. 
anyway, this time I didn't, I didn't die like in my other time. I think I died for a little bit. Well, I know I died, or I was halfway there at least. <laughs> uh, but that's my story today. Thank you.